Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Global Imaging Ambassador. I'd like to take the opportunity to walk you through Sony's Pixel Shift feature, which is available in Sony's A7R 3 camera. Um, one, you'll need to start taking some pictures using the Pixel Shift option. This is a way that the camera shoots four separate images, uh, which allows you to um, achieve uh, much sharper images, moire free, with a greater dynamic range. So this is going to be very popular for studio shooters, but also to landscape and architecture. So once you've downloaded Sony's Imaging Edge application, we now can go through to the workflow that I'd like to run you through. OK, so here I have the Imaging Edge application folder. There are three separate applications in here. And we'll start the process by double clicking the Viewer app to open that. And I'll go full screen with this application. Now this is um, a group of four images that I've um, captured using the A7R 3 pixel shift multi-shooting feature. And you're going to need to select all four of these images to process them into one single ARQ file. Now you can see the numbers are listed here so you know uh, where the pixel shift multi-shooting feature started and ended its process from one to four. We'll then simply need to right click and choose create and adjust pixel shift multi-shooting composite image. A little bit of a mouthful, but believe me, it's worth the wait. And it doesn't take too long to create that ARQ file. We'll go full screen on this. Now, uh, we can just export this file as a TIFF file and start editing it inside of our favorite image applications, such as Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, but I would uh, typically like to make some fine adjustments to this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up that histogram you can see I'm not quite uh, using the full dynamic range and the color temperature is a little bit blue. So we'll start going to the white balance and I'll just use a color temperature of 8,500 degrees Kelvin on this particular image. OK, so we'll just hit the return enter key to apply that. I'll also remove a little bit of that magenta cast uh, by just uh, hitting the minus on that color correction, which will take it down to minus 10 on that uh, slider there. There's a few other things that we can do. Again, we can expand that dynamic range. And to do that, we'll come over to the contrast. And I'll just uh, click on that white slider. I'll just kind of collapse that white balance there so you can see more clearly. And I'll just uh, increase that whites maybe a little bit more, maybe up to 50, just to increase that dynamic range. We can also apply the um, uh, camera adjustments, the lens corrections to this. So let's just uh, come over to lens corrections and I'll turn the distortion compensation to on. You can see the magnification chromatic aberration has already been switched on. That's because that setting is switched on on my particular A7R3 camera. OK, we could carry on fine tuning this process, but I'm more comfortable editing in my um, uh, Photoshop Adobe Camera Raw application. So I'm actually just going to process this file. When you have a, a landscape where nothing is moving, um, you're basically going to find that that is the work pretty much complete after some maybe um, a graduated filter or fine adjustments in a program such as Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. But where you do have uh, moving elements between the four images captured in camera, you may experience artifacts. Typically, the places to look would be in the sky or inside of any moving foliage that might have been moving in the wind. OK, so we're just going to export this first off. I'll export it to my desktop and uh, I'm going to choose 16 bit and I'm going to raise that color space to Adobe RGB. And I'm, I'm exporting the full size image here onto my desktop. And so I'll just save that out. OK, that doesn't take the application too long, just a second or two to create that 16 bit TIFF file. 
Okay, I'm actually going to return to the viewer application. Um, this is uh, recommended only if you feel that you may experience artifacts in those moving elements. I'll just select the first of those four images here and I'll double click to take that into um, my um, application. Now, if you want to synchronize the settings between the two, you're basically going to come over to your ARQ processed file. You're going to come up to the edit image process settings and choose to copy those settings. And then you can come down to your single ARW file, which was one of the four files used to uh, process this image. And uh, we're now going to paste those settings, Command V on a Mac, Control V on a PC. And that will apply my white balance, my contrast and my lens corrections. So basically these two files will pin register if I need to make a composite file inside of Photoshop. And we'll also need to export this file again onto my desktop 16-bit and Adobe RGB and hit save. Okay, once that is uh, processed, we can now come back to my uh, desktop and um, basically start processing the two process files. You can see the PSMS. This is the pixel shift multi shooting file. And this is the single file that I'll only be using for any elements in the image that we're moving, such as the sky or foliage. So I'll take both of these into Photoshop and I'll just uh, open those. OK, so in order to create a composite file, I'm just going to drag the uh, single file. This is the single exposure. And I'm just going to uh, select the Move tool and drag this into the Pixel Shift multi-shooting file. Just holding down the Shift key as I let go of the mouse button will make sure that these two files are pin registered. Now, typically what we will do is um, if you're just working simply, uh, I would just uh, hold down the Alt Option key click on that um, uh, layer mask option there and this will hide all of the pixels. I'll only basically paint in with a white brush where we're getting any artifacts. Let's just uh, zoom in. Okay, um, I'll just zoom in uh, to this image and see if we can find any of the artifacts that I'm particularly looking for. Very subtle, but you can see some artifacts in the sky here. And this is where I would just take um, the uh, the mask here, select a brush, um, and then with white 100% soft edge brush, I can just remove those artifacts from that sky there. And you might want to just cycle around looking for any artifacts that you might need to remove by brushing out. And again, over the foliage, okay, and. Uh, uh, a little bit more over the foliage, just the edges of the foliage seems to be affected by this artifacting and a little bit over there and zoom out and that may all be that is required to basically remove any artifacts that you might have. You could also do some more sophisticated compositing techniques uh, depending on uh, how many skills you have inside of Photoshop. OK, what I would then typically do is I will basically take these two edited files into my favorite uh, um, part of Photoshop, which is Adobe Camera Raw. It's the same sort of tools that you're familiar with if you're a Lightroom user. To do this, we're just going to come up to the filter menu and choose convert for smart filters. OK, and I'll select OK there. Now, because these are two very large 16-bit um, uh, files, it will take a, a minute or two just to um, put those into the smart object uh, layer. Once that smart object appears, we can come back to the filter menu and choose Camera Raw Filter. OK, and now basically what you can do is you can just finish this image off uh, with your favorite techniques. Here I'm going to add uh, some graduated filters, maybe um, a, a stop and a half or so on this graduated filter. And I'm going to come down across that sky. I'm going to use um, uh, one of the f uh, features that I like using here, which is the range mask. And I'll select the color option here and I'll come in and I'll just restrict those adjustments uh, just to the sky tone. So I'm basically restoring the luminance values 
of this area and I'll just uh, raise that color range just for a little bit more of a subtle uh, transition between that on the range mask I'll just range that to 60 I'll add uh, another one I'll click new and I'll add another um, adjustment or graduated filter from the base of this image okay so with that applied um, I'm just going to come back and then I'll start fine-tuning the image holding down the alt or option key I can uh, uh, select a white point if needs be just a little bit higher than the one I'd selected inside of the edit app of Sony I'll also check that I've got a black point just moving that ever so slightly down I'm going to add some uh, clarity uh, quite a lot of clarity to this file and also open up the shadows okay what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little bit of split toning to this image uh, we're just going to uh, come over into the split toning panel I'll um, add some a little bit of warmth to those highlights and a little bit of cool tone uh, to those uh, shadows and I'll just uh, move that balance slider because uh, I wanted a little bit more so around the other way a little bit warmer than cooler on that balance with the split toning complete I think I'll just come over to the spot healing uh, tool there and I'll just uh, remove this little bit of a distracting element inside of this image um, that creates a nice fix I'll just move that over slightly so we don't get a, a bit of repetition that I'm seeing there and uh, with that uh, process complete I'll uh, come back I'll uh, also come over to the FX and I'll um, add a little bit of post crop vignette here I'll just bring that into minus 20 there and I'll use the color priority there okay so um, now I am uh, pressing OK to apply all of those adjustments uh, to my edited file and now I'm free to save that off as a process file and share that with social media or print a very large print because the detail inside of these pixel shift files is simply astonishing it is going to make um, uh, your even your GM lenses uh, just shine a little bit more than they have been and that's hard to imagine but uh, it's definitely worth trying this pixel shift multi shooting out uh, just to experience how sharp image files can get okay so I'm Mark Gaynor Sony Global Imaging Ambassador Thank you.